posting on Twitter to see Tony's thank you message to you, the fans. And also, join the conversation on Twitter and send your own thanks to Tony using the hashtag Cheers Tony. Tony. We can see that helmet that Tony Stewart is wearing. He's had a new helmet every week. And that's sort of been his exchange this year. He's wanted a new helmet every week because he loves to get other drivers' helmets. In fact, 25 drivers in today's race have walked up to him voluntarily and said, hey, you can have my helmet in this race, and I'll give it to you, and I'll exchange a helmet with you. So Tony certainly has a ton of respect in the garage area. Why is he wearing glasses, though? I think Tony should have more fanfare this year. And Tony said... Currently, Tony Stewart running in the 24th spot. Still up front, it's Kevin Harvick. And a great battle for the lead continues between Harvick and Carl Edwards. So look at the championship for running second, third, fourth, fifth. Somebody let like Kevin Harvick know there's a championship battle here. He's leading the race. But Jimmy Johnson started last on the field, has worked his way up in the fifth position. That puts all four championship contenders inside the top five. Kelly. Well, we just heard about Tony Stewart's collection of helmets. Well, how about this? Carl Edwards, last week at Phoenix, gave Tony Stewart as a retirement gift. The helmet that he wore back in 2011 when they had that unbelievable battle for the championship right here at Miami. Tony Stewart saying it shows just how thoughtful it is. And Carl Edwards has admitted that fire suits and helmets have special significance to him, but he felt like it was the right thing to do to hand that one over to Tony. It's one of the things that Carl Edwards does. He doesn't keep any of the trophies. He gives the trophies away. Normally it's to kids that he's met, maybe uh, people that are suffering from something or another, uh, but Carl Edwards has been very generous as far as the trophies. He always gives those away, but it's the first helmet that I've heard he's You have to ask a little self-motivation. Maybe that was the most important helmet he had, and he thought, you know what, I'm going to give this away because I know next week, this Sunday in Miami, this helmet I'm wearing today could be more important. Maybe this would be the one I win my first championship in. Rick, it took fewer than 50 laps for Jimmy Johnson to make his way from the back of the field all the way up inside the top five. That speaks to his determination, something that he had demonstrated as early as eight years old. I spoke with his younger brother, Jared, earlier this week, who told me a story of Jimmy Johnson when he was racing motorcycles in the desert. He said he was eight years old with a broken leg. All he needed to do was complete one lap in the final race to win the championship. So what did Johnson do? He propped his leg up over the handlebars and drove that one lap, got last place points, and won the championship. And oh, by the way, the leathers he was wearing that day, they were donated by his racing hero, Ricky Johnson. Certainly a determined driver. He's been determined his entire racing career, Rick. Yeah, determined to get up to the front, and he's done it. Very little time. After starting at the back of the field, he's made it all the way up to the fifth spot now. Let's listen into some spotter audio for the 48 team. Spotter for the 48 team. That was spotter coverage presented by Liberty Mutual Insurance, helping drivers worry less. Vibration in a car, never good. Yeah, and listen, it's worrisome, but if it's just a tire, sometimes the tire can just be a little unbalanced and it makes this vibration. Remember, you're approaching 190 mile an hour entering these cars. Holy quarters, crap. So just a little bit of off balance can make a huge difference in the way the car feels. And that can change throughout the run. So the fact that he kind of identified it as a right rear, that makes me not too worried. Well, this is the car that Earl Barber and the Jack Mouse were having a conversation about. This three car, bright white with the red three, just passed through the screen there. They want to know, hey, he's running pretty good. Where is he running? Guess what? We've had our first taker, Jeff. This three of Austin Dillon is running. You see right here, end gear, right against the wall, middle of the corner, right against the wall, and stays there on corner exit. We wondered how long it would take. We saw Ryan Blade, he got it in the wall. Austin Dillon figured it was time to go up there. He's running in the sixth position. Yeah, when Earl was fine or said he's running the wall, and he's staying against the wall, that's what he was referring to. He's not running against the wall, then turning left and getting away from it. He's staying against the wall all the way through the corner. His first reward. Austin Dillon is trying to win his first cup race. He's not at a point race. He just wants to win. So he's willing to take that gamble early in this race. Because of the time of day of this race, the 
the sun beginning to set on the racetrack. And so the turns one and two racing surface, now don't, they don't have the sun beating down on it. Those turns are uh, in the shade. And then at the opposite end of the racetrack, three and four, still full sun on that part of the track. Does that determine where you're going to run on the track because of maybe a little cooler temperatures in one and two? I think the cooler temperatures help, but remember, we're starting to get, you know, toward the middle of the run. We're run 25 laps so far on this run. Tires are starting to wear out a little bit, so that affects it as much as the sun. These tires wear out quickly. The car is not going to drive as good on old tires. Jimmy Johnson, what a move he has made from the back all the way up to the fifth position. Johnson has never won here. It's one of only four tracks without a win for the 48 team and Jimmy Johnson. What a moment.